Alright guys, Pats fan, 1284. A lot of people said they're ready for this, they want to see it. I'm ready too, so check it out. We got a little bit of two types of popcorn. I already showed you the types, but as you can see, we got some red, we got some golden. In the back you see the starter. I think we're ready to go. We're going to uh, cut to the chaos so you can see what it's like in action. Alright guys, this is what it's like. If you want to see madness, you can take this off and watch it go freaking all over the place, but I figure for less than a penny's worth of oil, of oil this is the best way to do it. And then, um, that's it. The best thing to do, do a little popcorn while you're doing it. And keep the wife over there filming so you don't have to share. It's my plan. Alright, now to see what one pound of popcorn looks like, Pop. Alright, so this is what a pound of popcorn looks like. Just got to uh, wake up in the a.m., get it going, and um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are starting the process. Popcorn beer, heavy metal, and more grains. Draining out the mash tun right now in here is just um, sanitizing solution. Getting my uh, mash water up to 10. Let's see, we're at 100, and we're getting ready to roll. See you guys in a little bit. Alrighty, so the moment of truth. I don't know if you can see up here, you can't. Alright, but our strike water is to, or our mash water is to 10. So in goes the popcorn. The reason I want the popcorn in first is my thoughts are that the hot water will help it compress a little bit. I don't know if you can see that yet, but this mash tun is almost half full from the popcorn alone. So that's a lot of popcorn. Um, so I got most of the popcorn. There's a couple kernels on the bottom, but that's a friggin' pound of popcorn there. I don't think I need to be that crazy about it. So all right, we're gonna start the process of putting that in. Then I'm gonna start working in my other grains once the um, once the water gets up above the uh, popcorn. I'm gonna then work my other grains in, and uh, that's all she wrote for uh, the mashing process. So let's get back when the uh, the grains are ready to get put in. All right. So as you can see, the popcorn shrunk down dramatically once the hot water hit it. Thank God, I was concerned it was going to uh, overflow my mash tun. Now, just going to work some of these grains in nice and slowly. Uh, sorry if you guys can hear my dog in the background. He's insane. Don't mind him. But yeah, just going to work these. Um, FYI, the reason this uh, spoon is wet is because it was sitting in sanitizer. I do take that uh, very, very seriously. All right, we can cut the temperature on that. Now we just gotta mash these bad boys in. All right, you guys have seen a hundred mashing videos, so that's the process. No need in going over it for the one millionth time. I'll uh, come back to you when I'm um, doing my first runnings. All right, guys. So here is the uh, recipe. Our name, the wife and I have decided, Movie House. So we have seven pounds of two row, three pounds of premium Pilsner, and one pound mixed popcorn. Um, that popcorn I got at Whole Foods. So it was expensive as hell. Um, 11 pounds is the total. Our hops, well, I can just make it easy for you. One thing of Chinook, one thing of Crystal, two things of Crystal. So this is gonna go in at the beginning of the boil. And then these two bad boys are going to go in um, at the 15 minute mark. So that's basically it. I mashed with 12 quarts of water. That's key because that is a lot of popcorn. Um, at 156 degrees, I had to add a little bit of ice. Um, I was surprised it uh, didn't want to get to temp. And I haven't done my first runnings yet, but I'll basically update you guys on what that is. But this is kind of how I do it. Um, Kind of curious to see what anyone else uses if they don't use um, a um, software or anything. And then also I was curious, in my mash tun, I had a lot of, there was just enough foam covering the top. I mean, it wasn't like foam foam. There was a very, very thin layer. Uh, I was curious, what does that mean? Is that bad? Um, 
Uh, from what I believe, it's just a what I've read real quick. It's just a lot of protein, which would make sense because there's a lot of protein in corn. Um, and I had a pound of pop popcorn. So let me know what you guys think. And uh, when we get back, hopefully uh, we'll be in the process of doing my runnings. All right, so we're doing our. Um, this is actually my uh, second runnings. I've already did my first runnings. I got uh, 22 on the bricks, so uh, there was a lot more sugar in uh, that corn than I expected. So right now it's running off. Um, the color right now looks kind of like a wheat beer. So it's not, the color's not what I was going for. So I mean, right off the bat, I'm slightly disappointed with that. Um, but the smell is amazing. Um, the thing that I didn't, and I apologize for all the ums guys, you know, I'm still a newbie. The thing though that I noticed when I read the back of that popcorn is that uh, it was called like, one was Golden Promise, one was like Apache Red, or I don't, it was basically a red. And the Golden Promise was, you know, just a standard popcorn. Um, and the red was the difference in the taste. When I mean standard popcorn, the golden, you know, it tasted like standard popcorn, but amazing. And the red had a bit of a nutty taste to it. So those two together are creating an amazing smell right now. So I think the only thing I might do is possibly add maybe um, a pound of caramel 80 to this. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'll cut back, maybe I'll cut back on the two row by two pounds, then add a pound of Pilsner and add a pound of Crystal 80. And the reason I say that is I just want a little bit more color. Um, We'll see what happens because, you know, the funny thing is I brewed uh, that red beer that I have, my Irish red. I brewed that and I, I was laughing the entire time. I was like, red my ass. This is brown as hell. And, you know, once carbonation kicked in, it, it, it kind of lightened it up, it seemed like, and it, it really was red. So that was good because I was, I was kind of upset. But this is basically our second runnings, like I was saying, 22 on the bricks. Um, I'm going to finish up my runnings and then start the boil. So we're getting close to finishing this bad boy. Peace. All right, you may be asking yourself, am I mixing up my videos? Turns out I'm not. I am actually brewing inside. Let's see if we can see the boil. It's just starting to be in there. You can really see it kicking up in the back. But I had to move inside because it turns out even in Maryland, propane tanks can freeze outside. So my tank quit on me after the sixth time. I said, you know what? Enough, let's just move it inside. So, we are inside for right now. Um, gonna boil for another, um, about another 30 minutes, and then we'll be done. I'm gonna try a new system of uh, cooling it down. So, we'll see. It's gonna involve this pot going into that pot. I'm actually gonna put my wort chiller in there, and um, we'll see how it works. I, uh, I actually have some confidence about it. I think it's gonna work out pretty good. Uh, we'll see. It's kind of like a plate chiller, but the wort is never going to go inside the wort chiller, so it's kind of backwards. I know that sounds really stupid, but I'll show you guys uh, how it is. Alright, so here was my idea. What I was doing was taking right from here, as you can see, um, I got aluminum foil on here, which I sprayed underneath with some good old sanitizer, so that's completely sanitary. Then what I was doing was draining it from there into here. The idea was this pot has a thermometer on it and this pot is um, the lid is a much better seal so the idea was drain from here with the wort chiller in here cooling it down with the ice bath and then going into here but unfortunately this thing could only cool it down to about 120 degrees and that's just way too hot to put yeast in a fermenter so on the plus side right now that, that you know 120 degrees that that's really freaking hot in there that's basically a steam bath so after letting it soak for over two hours with sanitizer plus that I'd say the chances of getting an infected brew you know knock on wood are now officially zero but yeah my idea just didn't work as well tried to think outside the box and it didn't work so um, I don't know I guess back to the drawing board on a way to uh, cool things down quicker than a um, than a uh, wart chiller or a plate chiller. If you guys got any ideas, let me know. All right, so it only took about 25 minutes for it to cool down. Uh, drained it in there. And now I'm just waiting for um, any signs of fermentation to begin. It's kind of sitting in its rightful place. 
right under the sign my uh, mom and dad got me. But uh, yeah, it's just gonna chill there for now. It's got a um, I'll go with interesting color. I was thinking it might come up a little bit paler than that, and it didn't. And I don't know how to take that. I haven't decided if it's a good thing or not, or if I'll keep the recipe now. So as I was saying um, earlier, I really didn't like the color. I thought it was way too, uh, way too light yellow. Now it's uh, it's got an interesting color. Uh, the only screw ups of the day were one I forgot to put in some Irish moss. By the time I remembered, it was zero minutes left in the boil. And I, I just didn't feel like chancing it uh, with an infection. So I said no thanks. And then of course my um, propane freezing. Who knew? Lesson learned. Um, I guess I'll be um, cooking inside, well, brewing inside, until uh, it gets at least, I don't know, 40, 50 degrees outside. I guess if it goes, you know, below 32 degrees outside, that um, there's just no, or at least overnight, there's no way I'm brewing. But yeah, look at it. Just gonna chill in there, and then um, I'll take it downstairs and put it in this nice little ice bath I have. Like I was saying, it has um, San Francisco lager yeast in there, so I actually only need to get it between 50 and 65 degrees. I think I can easily do that with the ice bath. So I'm going to take that downstairs and get that going, because as soon as I see fermentation, that's where this bad boy, or that's where that bad boy's going, right in here. So that's it for my brew day. Any questions, concerns, let me know. Um, if you guys have any other ways of cooling down your wort, let me know. I'm trying to think outside the box. Uh, I just don't like the idea of the plate chiller, because my biggest concern is things getting stuck in there and never being able to get in there and clean it. So those are my concerns. If you can think of something that I can do that with, I'd greatly appreciate it. But till then, I'm out. I'm going to enjoy some homebrew and clean up. So if any of you live nearby and would like to help me clean up, uh, I'll treat you my address. Peace.